morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm waiting for help. See, I was, I was going to make a snarky comment about I'm waiting for Elton to walk in, but Elton's already in the hall. Come in. He was bending I'm over. Up and stuff. That's pretty typical of Jesus. I, 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 I will chastise myself. Yeah, okay. Elton. okay. Good to see you all. Um, when you were coming in and you were getting your name badges, our membership chair, Guillermo, should have been telling you that we had some things that we're distributing to the members, one each. We've got, these are, oh. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's try it again. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Hey! Um, now that we've done the welcome, Guillermo, do we have any visitors today? No, not so far. No visitors. Do we have any new members today? Any new members? Okay, so we're good there. All right. So, disclaimer. I'm explaining, not complaining. But basically, my wife and I have been sick since the last meeting. So, if my voice goes out, that's why. And if you see me doing that a lot, it's because I'm coughing. So, as far as I know, I don't think I'm contagious. But, so, moving right along. Needless to say that blew off all of my commitments that I made at the last meeting to meet with various people. So maybe end of January, February, I might be back in the swing again. All right, so welcome to meeting number 294 of TMG, the Mac Group. It is January 2020. You're staring, you're frowning. You don't like 294? Oh, no, it's just, you're distorting. So. I'm distorting, so. Too much, too much. Yeah. You're too loud. Well, we've been talking about that for a long time. How about like that? Better? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, the three guys, the three wise men at the back table don't get their hands over their ears now. So I guess I must be All right. Um, what can I say? We made it through another year. And we're still able to print, and we're still able to get our mail, our emails. So I guess we're all good to go. Now, if we could just get our Facebook accounts and our Twitter accounts to work right, I guess we'd be golden. So with that said, let's move on to our usual agenda. So we've done the good morning and the welcome. News, are there any news items the members wish to share? <coughs> going once, going twice. So, really, there hasn't been much news that we're allowed to talk about here. Oh, yes, Mr. Big Firefox uh, security uh, poll has emerged in the last day or so. They actually came out with a new release, and two days later, they had to do a, uh, a panic release. I don't remember much more, but if you're running Firefox, you want to get it updated because apparently it's a bad exploit, uh, and it's being seen in the wild. Mm -hmm. So what Rich was saying is that if you use the Firefox web browser, you want to make sure that you've got the latest version. And the way you make sure you have the latest version is you'll go to your Apple, you've got Firefox running, you'll go to your Apple, you'll go to the little line that says about Firefox, and then it'll bring up a dialog box that will tell you whether it's downloading an update or not. And if it is, eventually, Firefox, yeah. Yeah, not the Apple. Not the Apple? No, Firefox. Firefox. The Apple's about this man. You are correct. Because the Apple's, yeah, it's the uh, application menu. So you go to where it says Firefox. And then that next one down. About Firefox. And now it's going to look and it's going to say, oh, it's downloading an update right now. So obviously I didn't have the latest Firefox on. Oh. 
good to know. I'm glad I come to the meetings. Yes. Ready for another topic? It's all about sharing. Sure. Thunderbolt 4 was announced at CES. 80, you know, the speed was 40 before, 40 gigabytes per second. Mm -hmm. This is 80. So this is going to be really fast. It'll be a while before anybody here sees it, or I see it, and anybody sees it. Ooh. But it's, it's going to be really fast. 80 gigabytes, that's over wired. Yeah. Consumer electronic, is it so called consumer electronic share? It's called CES. CES, anyway. They, call that they also <laughs> announced a new family of Bluetooth, yes. Bluetooth that's going to be doing audio. some really, really good things. And you've got the ATTC, which is the new protocol for your digital television coming, you know, over the air television, that's going to supposedly <laughs> make your reception much better. Trash so, your TVs again. No, no, I, I, there, there's a, a guy I know out of Pennsylvania who installs antennas for cord cutters. And he's been to the labs and he says, yes, what he's seeing is uh, channels that would have been fringe in the past yeah. on your uh, current equipment and your current tuners will come in better. Oh, yeah, it's better. Yeah. But unfortunately, well, what, what it will obsolete. You can't listen. You can't receive on your, on your current TV. TV. Oh. And your current TV and your current and your you can't. Can. It's it's yeah. No, the tuners are not. There's no backward compatibility. So we're going to go through another. <coughs> what I always do when somebody calls me on the variety veracity of my information is I immediately say, okay, I don't know. Then I will check that. Mm -hmm. I'll check it with him. Mm -hmm. That's true. What he said is true. Right. Okay. Yeah, New tuners good. again? Yeah. What are you supposed to do with your, I mean, you yeah. know, a television you buy it and it's good for like 12, 14 years? Well, I, I mean, need to just sell monitors. Right. Okay. Well, someone told me that they make special yeah, versions for hotels and stuff that are just extremely minimal. And I don't know if they're cheaper or not, but. You know, you could get and then use that as a monitor, but then you need flames on Then you need still this external okay. thing. So anyway, the new over-the-air television protocol, ignore what I said. I will research it and figure out what is actually going on with that. But the new Fire, uh, excuse me, the new Thunderbolt, and the new Bluetooth standards, uh, those are real deals and they're already... Uh, is it Acer and Asus that have got laptops that have already got the... There was a lot of new laptops. HP had new laptops. Everybody had new laptops. Okay. The new ones from Toshi, I mean from uh, the guys in China. They're all in China. Yeah. So they are Lenovo? Lenovo is new one. Yeah. Um, with the Thunderbolt, are they starting to put Thunderbolt in the laptops? Or are they... It's an Intel chipset first. Okay. Nobody's got it in the, in the laptop. Yeah, it will come as, you know, once the chipsets are released. They just okay. announced they're going into the next chipset. And you figure they'll follow what Apple did and do the USB-C that you can... They're already doing that. Some okay. Places. So so now the Firefox web browser has finished downloading the update, and you get the little button that says, Restart to update Firefox. So then you uh, go on up. And click it and it reboots it and then it's doing its thing. Restart Firefox. Okay. And then it wants me to put in who I am. And is that permitted? You can do all of that. Other than that, other than, uh, yes. I may be stealing a little bit of Rick's thunder, but uh, Apple, Google, and I think Amazon announced that they were working on a consortium to standardize home automation. Yeah, we're going to talk about that for sure. Yeah. So, okay. The driving force behind that was the revelations about the ring uh, camera systems and the back doors that are built into them deliberately and that Amazon was using as a marketing ploy to police departments and large apartment complex owners. Uh, so the, they're, they're going to Apple Apple is going to be the security guys on it, on this new standard, since they seem to have figured out security pretty well, where Google and Microsoft not so much. So, but it, it'll be nice to see that, because, it, now, correct me if I'm wrong, 
But right now, there really is no standard. So if you have uh, something that you bought from Home uh, Depot, their own little, you know, uh, IoT, Internet of Things thing, and then they decide they're not going to do it anymore, you're dead in the water because it's all server-based. But it's no different than text messages. I mean, there's a lot of text message standards, too. I mean, this problem is, is it's in every area. We're going to talk about that in my talk. So okay, okay. It's a problem that's gone on for a long time in a lot of different areas. It's not going to get any better for a long yeah. time. You know, because I can remember going back to the X10 and some of the old, yeah. older standards. And they, you know, everybody thought that was where they were going to go. They didn't. Nobody hacks that. Okay. Anybody else with news items? Going once, going twice, going three times. No? Okay. Now we're going to go freebies wanted for sale. Anybody have any, let's see, anybody bring any freebies in this month? Ah, Elton, what do you got? For sale. Oh, for sale, okay. It's a mouse, a wireless, uh, an Apple wireless mouse. Uh, I got another one when I got my new keyboard. Okay. And so this one is up for sale cheap. $2. Okay, okay. So if you, if you need a wireless mouse, <laughs> Apple. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's already sold. sold already. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> sold in America. Okay. Yes, sir. I have two iMacs for sale. One's a 2014, one's a 2015. The, the 2014 is the large screen. Yeah. The 2015 is the smaller screen. Yeah. Image. I don't have all the details. I didn't get it printed out, but I'll bring it next month if I don't have them gone already. But if anybody's interested, just email me and I'll get you the specs. Okay. Um, Mr. Georges, since you handle the website and the communications to the members, one of our members, our associates, who will remain nameless, had suggested that if they have items for the freebie or that they're selling, that we somehow incorporate that into the after-meeting message. Think about that, whether it's something we could do or not. Well, when do you want the after-meeting message sent out? I send it out that same day as the yeah. meeting. If you want it out yeah. three weeks well, after, then... What about if we had, like, another page on the website? <clears throat> uh, members' information and what they have. We can do that. I can update it periodically, yeah. Yeah, okay. If okay. they send well, it to we'll, me. Well, think, just think about it. Yeah. We're not committing to doing it, folks. We're just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. So we had freebies. Nobody had freebies. Anybody looking for equipment? Okay, we had Rick tell about the stuff he's got. Dan, by any chance, do you have, Dan Wyckoff, do you have any stuff that you're... Well, of looking? course, of course. I mean, it's it's like a given, isn't it? So, uh, some of the... Hey, by the way, I added up how much stuff, of your stuff, I had bought. <laughs> And this is getting expensive for me. I'm going to have to stop coming to these meetings. But think of all the money you're saving by buying used. You know, first of all, there's, there is, there's, you know, everything that's still good, yeah, that's yeah, still yeah. working, yeah. is a tragedy when it gets thrown away. I, but that's my the problem is, Dan, I'm feeling guilty about those hard drive enclosures, <laughs> you know, that fit right underneath the Mac Mini. They're yeah. like, they're from, and I can tell you bought them, but you never used them. And you know, so oh, no, they were well, they were well used. No, they were still in the crap, and I could tell. Well, still that's ties that's a testament them. to how much boxes, how many boxes I keep in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, for those who are who still have old Apple II games or GS games, there's a rather rich collector's market for that stuff now. So just be aware. Well, okay. Anyway, getting the back prize, to the, the prize stuff. this month is uh, a Wemo uh, uh, remote switch. Uh, you can control the, uh, the, the anything that plugs into a regular 120 outlet with this device. You need the app on your phone or on. So you could automate it. Say, hey, turn the light on when it's exactly. sunset. Or you can put it on a schedule. Turn it off. When a lot it's better. Sunrise. A lot better than the little mechanical timers with the little dial that never. Yeah. Because that, you know, this automatically changes with the time, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then... Uh, so what's the price point on that? Uh, everything is Andrew Jackson. This is Andrew Jackson week. 
So anything, everything in this box is twenty bucks, including the box. So okay. So uh, and then uh, I still have the. Uh, if you've got a if you've got a, a Japanese automobile and uh, you want to figure out why the check engine light is on for another Andrew Jackson, you can. This device plugs into the ODP port and tells you exactly the uh, error code, and you can clear it if you feel like it. Okay. And uh, that's that's also twenty bucks. And uh, if you've got a, an iPad Pro, I've got a couple of. Uh, 12 South uh, cases for uh, version 2 that I've had for 12 And those also are Andrew Jackson's? Yep. Okay. That's it. Oh, never mind. I was about to see something that was kind of associated with the political realm, so I'm just going to stop myself before I go there. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to say freebies wanted for sale. We're done. If you're interested in any of those items that Dan was talking about, see him at the break. If you were interested in what Elk was talking about, forget it, because Cap already says he wants it. And your homework assignment is to figure out what you want for the machines you have and get this right. Does he know you're selling them? <laughs> 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 he actually Not asked us to do it. So, moving right along, we're going to go to Help Desk. Now, I'm looking at the back row. See, see, I have the three wise men over there. Those guys, they, it's like I go to them for help. Uh, I got Dell. He's busy reading. Uh, is that Kiplinger's? Yeah, it's Kiplinger's. Yeah, okay. Elton doesn't need help. We know that. Oh, all right. We'll, we'll go to Phyllis first, and then we'll go to Rick. It's on my iPad. I think it's a, an update that they did. It's where in my mail, and I pick up something I want to read. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not doing it now. But a sidebar, side window comes over. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'll slide off, and sometimes it won't. But I'd like to not ever have it come up. Okay, now the sidebar that comes up, what does yes. it have on it? It has what I had clicked on that I wanted to read. Ah, okay. It's the same thing. Okay. Only one point type. Anybody have any ideas of what it's doing? Is it a preference? Well, it is different in when it's horizontal versus when it's vertical. Because when it's horizontal, you can see the messages on the left, and, and you can see what the message says on the right. But if you turn it vertically, that thing that shows the messages covers up half of what the message says. So when I always do it here. this way when I'm doing email. When, when, when you tap on it, do you think it might be bringing the, the actual item up in like Safari? Yes. Oh. So it's doing like two apps at the same time, split screen? Oh. Never tried Safari, but well, yeah, it is. If she can get it to come up, I'll take a look at it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If she can just get it to come up, I don't know for sure where she's All right. So, Phyllis? Oh, it's a separate window on the side. Okay. Oh, okay. It just did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then, you, then you can't read what it was trying to tell you. Okay. At the break. Oh, that's not what I was thinking. Phyllis, leave it. And at the break, show it to Rick. Or show it to Rick now if you want. Okay. Oh, you want now? No, at the break. At the break. Okay. If you find an answer to that, I'm having that problem too. Go talk to Rick at the break. Go we'll talk to Rick. <laughs> break Rick. Okay. There goes your break. <laughs> right. We got a different course. Just a reminder. Okay. You know, there are no paid employees in this organization, and it doesn't run. You know me. Me running an organization. Oh my lord. No, it would never happen. It's because of people like Rick and his wife and Mark Georges, Guillermo, Kathy Toller, uh, Don Bennett, Bill Howe, Chuck. Uh, it's because of people like them that we have a program, we have raffle items, and we have some good information coming in. Me, I'm just a facilitator. Okay. So, with that said, all the people here. 
And the most important person in this whole equation, believe it or not, is you. Because I can't tell you how many of the younger generation don't go to meetings. They do everything without meeting people. Uh, there's just something about when you get enough people in the room, there's, there's this magic that happens, a secret sauce, where all of a sudden you have a question and somebody's got the answer. And that just is so nice. Example, I now have an updated Firefox web browser that I probably would have had anyway, but now I have it at the meeting because of Rick and what he told me. Okay, you had your pants down. So, remember, you're part of this group, too. We're all unindicted co-conspirators. Okay, so with that said, let me go. Did you have another one right besides the... Uh... I haven't had my first one yet. Okay. <laughs> I have a Canon 8800 or 1000 or something. A delightful scanner. And it worked beautifully up until I uh, what's two operating systems back, mm -hmm. and then it went to we were at Catalina. What was before Catalina? Well, happy. Okay, when those two started, then it quit, and Canon is not supporting it anymore. Okay. Is there any way that I can get that thing working with? Yes, Mojave? there is. And if you remember, um, we did a presentation about a. Uh, piece of software, software from Hamrick Software. And it is, a, for all intents and purposes, the universal scanner driver. Let me just bring it up here. I'm working on the senior day. I have to remember stuff. I can remember the icon of the software, and I can remember Hamrick. View scan, view scan, view scan for the Mac, you can have the ViewScan app for the phone and for the iPad is free. The ViewScan app for a Windows machine or for a, a Mac uh, computer, you have to pay for it. But this is my go-to whenever somebody has a scanner and they, it's no longer being supported by the company that made it. This is this this is the one to go to, uh, and it's View Scan V U E S C A N. Now, way back when, last century, when I still was employed at a newspaper, you you all remember what newspapers were? Okay. Newspapers. <clears throat> we had all of these old scanners, Opticons. There was some stuff that was made in East Germany. Why they had it, Dayton Daily News, I do not know. And we're trying to get things computerized. ViewScan was the only program I could find that would support a Unix machine, a Windows machine, and a Mac, and get this stuff that was from who knows where to work. And sometimes work with more features than the original drivers gave it. Yeah, that scanner was beautiful because it would do all kinds of uh, 35 millimeter and other size yeah. negatives and slides. The and other that thing stuff. that ViewScan has in it is optical character recognition, where it will take, uh, you're scanning a piece of paper. Well, when you scan it, you're just creating a photograph of it, if you will. Right. Okay, it's a picture. View scan will turn it into electronic type. Oh yeah. So that's another. I've not thing. had good success with that, but I do play with it. Some. Yeah. So anyway, so view scan is what you want to use. Uh, I have found it works extremely well with the Canon LDPE scanners. The ones that you, it's, you know, one USB cable into the scanner, there's no power brick, you plug it into the Mac. They were mainly used by reporters on the go back in the day when we had reporters. I have an old can. We may can. still have a couple, but not many. I have an old can that's powered with the USB. Yeah, it'll, it'll work with those, too. So there was all these old scanners that we were able to resurrect and get working again on customers. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, it, for me, ViewScan is what I call epiphany software. You go like, oh, I see the light. Yes, Dan. Another another product that I've had success with is uh, Silverfast. Uh, 
they have a fairly wide gamut of scanners. I had an old Nikon Nik slide scanner that uh, had, uh, you know, worked since 2008. Is that S I L B E R F A S T? F A S T, yes. Uh, they're on version eight now, but uh, they 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 support a lot of different flatbed as well as slide scanners. Okay. Well, they're on Wikipedia, so they must exist. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's another one that you might want to look at, Silver Phoenix, which I had never heard of. Okay, this is good. I'm learning stuff today. So those two are ViewScan, which is from Hambrick, H-A-M-R-I-C-K software, and Silverfast, which is from Silverfast, S-I-L-V-E-R-F-A-S-T. small motor skills that aren't there that I need to use to get the oh, oh, point of on his age. Okay, so who else do we have for help desk? Go on. Barb? I'd like to get a printer that doesn't have all those little cartridges. I kind of like the all-in-one just because we copied a lot of stuff as yeah. well. What do you suggest? One that isn't going to eat okay. up all the ink. Um, when you say a lot of cartridges, are you talking about like five and seven cartridges? No, no. The Three. little cartridges that are gone Three. within a couple of months. Are you after color or black and white only? or? Uh, both, I think. Ooh. Those new uh, tankers from Epson, mega, mega they're, they're inkjet, but they don't have cartridges. They have bottles. Okay. And it's much more economical. And it holds a tremendous amount of ink. Okay. Epson. Epson. They call them tankers. Tankers. Okay. Uh, the only problem with Epson is, is that, like with HP inkjet printers, when you replace the cartridge, you usually replace the printhead. In Epson, the printheads just stay there, and you just, you know, mm -hmm. the printheads eventually wear out. Mm -hmm. But maybe find yourself an inexpensive color laser. Okay. Are you a Costco person? No. They're south of town. I'm north of town. No, Sandra may have something. Are you after color quality or uh, photo quality? No, no. Okay, yeah, then a color laser. Yeah, a color laser. Brother makes a decent one at a decent price. Okay. And actually, the laser toner, being more expensive for the toner cartridges, initially, there's a lot more pages out of them you do out of an inkjet. Okay. So you're so actually brother laser. Brother, a yeah. brother laser, you know, any color laser that's fairly inexpensive. Okay. Some of them are under three hundred dollars. So my favorite is the Xerox phaser. There you go. I'm on my third one now. Okay. And the other ones didn't die. They're still going. They're just at other people's. You know, there was a new feature I wanted, and so I tried. No, no, we're not talking about thermal. We're talking about actual xerographic toner. Uh, and they've been very, very reliable. And what I really like is you can also replace the fuser. It's a module that just pops out, a new one pops in. So, you know, I've had two sons doing dissertation, you know, doing doctoral stuff, and they just, when they were still in the house, man, it was like we were going through eight, nine reams of paper a month minimum. Uh, to do that on an inkjet, oh, it would bankrupt you. But on a, uh, uh, a laser, one, you get more impressions per mm -hmm. cartridge, and two, the cartridges usually are less when you're buying them, you know, through Amazon and that. So, Xerox is another brand that, they're also known as Lexmark, Xerox Lexmark. Oh, okay, I've seen that. Yeah, those are their inkjet printers. The Phaser are the Xerox type okay, printers. Phaser. Yeah, P H A S E R. Okay. Think Star Trek. <laughs> okay, phaser. When your warning runs out, then you can probably use the name of that. Oh. Which are much less expensive. Yeah. Okay. So, you know. So and and I've done... Is that an all-in-one kind of thing? Or, yeah. or um, probably not. Typically, yeah. there, are. There, there are a couple that are all-in-ones. 
the thing is, you know, I live in 2020, so I really don't need the fax feature anymore. No. And as to the copying, I've got a regular copy machine I use for that, oh, yeah. which is so. Well, we use the copy machine, or we use the copier on the rigger a lot. So. Yeah. But if it's an inkjet, it's going to be very expensive. It'll actually be more expensive than if you took it to the library and gave them a quarter to copy this stuff. Okay. Because that inkjet ink is, I mean, you're paying champagne prices for, you know, an ethyl glycol uh, with a little bit of iron in it. Now, the printer's relatively free compared to the cost of the cartridges. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Yes, Dan. Been there. I, I, have to, I have to speak up for the lowly inkjet printer. I've had, I've had good success using a product from a company called Precision Color, and it's, it's a uh, ink that's OEM quality, and you, you buy refillable cartridges. And uh, I, I've, I've for, I have a Canon inkjet that has six cartridges in it, mm -hmm. and a set of inks, which will probably refill three or four cartridges, are, uh, are probably like 60 bucks. Yeah. So, so wow. for less than $5 a refill, you, I, I'm very satisfied. I've been using it for over a year now. How much do print do you do? Uh, well, mostly black, but color printing I do yeah, a lot. You're, you're printing something like every week? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Probably. The, the thing that really bothers me is when I've got a customer and they print something once in a blue moon, okay? And it's always when they go to print it, the cartridges basically have dried out on them. And they gotta buy a new cartridge, and they only, you know, printed two pages off of the old ones when they first bought them. And that just bothers me. A zero, a zero graphic printer, uh, anything that's using toner, yeah, it's, it's gonna continue to work whether you're printing something once in a blue moon or... Well, the, thing, the thing with ink jets is you gotta, you got to get the right viscosity of ink. If you get the, yeah. you get the cheap refilled or remanufactured kind, yeah. those will definitely uh, blow out your print head because there's not enough body to the ink to keep the print head from overheating. Yeah. And the main problem I've had with that has been when I take it to an Office Max or an Office Depot and they're going to refill it for me. You're, you're not getting good quality ink there. Well, the company's called Precision Color. They're out in Niagara Falls. Okay. They sell uh, both the cartridges and the ink. In, okay. In and the refill process, you're doing a syringe process? Yep. Yep. If, okay. you, get, if, you, get a, uh, if you get a refillable cartridge, it comes with a little plug in the top. And you just take the plug out and put this ink in. Okay. So it's not where you're going through a membrane with a syringe needle. You're just pop, popping the... Cork yep. and refill in the bottle. Yep. Okay. Got Name it. again. The Precision ink. Precision color. Precision color of Niagara Falls. Out of Niagara Falls. Out of Niagara Falls. Yep. Um, well, often when I have um, my I'm on the line, I'm so far, I'll open a few things, and I'll get this message that says. Uh, a sound page has pictures, you know, mm -hmm. in newspapers. It'll say if you're using too much, um, too much stuff, you need to close something. Mm -hmm. I only got one thing open. But anyway. But you only have one window open or one tab. Well, well, maybe I'll, I will then go on to two. Okay. But I'll get this message and things are slow like molasses. Mm -hmm. and, I've, and I think, okay, I look to see how much memory I have, mm -hmm. and I've got 30, uh, 32 gigabyte, gigabytes on my system, Yeah, and I've got maybe a free memory of, you know, 21 or 23 mm -hmm. gigabytes. Why can't I get that some of that 23 mm -hmm. and put it over in the other room? Because you're looking at the wrong memory. They're talking about not memory RAM, they're talking about how much cache your 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 web browser is able to handle. Yeah, and it might say two point three point yeah two three. So let, let me show you something that I do on a regular basis with all of my web browsers. Does that include dynamite? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. 
I like machines it. I like me. I like machines. I can only recall one piece of electronic equipment that I basically did bad things to deliberately. Okay. And it was at the newspaper. <laughs> and it was down in the composing room. And the engravers were egging me on. Oh, yeah. and, and we took that anyway. Yeah. Did it need killing? It needed killing. It was evil and it was causing problems for all the other equipment. And once it was dead, it was dead. All right, so let me, let me fire up uh, Firefox, Google Chrome, Opera. So let's start out with Firefox. So up over here, we got Chrome. Thank you, Chrome. You're so slow, but you finally came up. I'm in Firefox. I go over to my history column. Okay. They call it a menu, but I'm just going to call it a column because people think of them as columns. And if you go down a little bit, you can say clear recent history. You'll also have uh, where you can. Uh, But typically, I'll just come in here and I'll say, hey, clear recent history. Uh, then you get a window that comes up like this. Let me zoom in here so you can see it. And let me give my super secret password, so I'll do it. So it's telling me all these different things, these areas, where the web browser brings stuff in from the internet and it'll hold it. So you've got browsing and download history, you've got active logins, you've got form and search history, cookies and cache. Usually the one that needs to be cleared out is the cache. So I'll tell it to clear now, clear out that cache. Now some people call it cache. Okay. <laughs> Just like some people call the, the uh, Air Force Base in North Dakota Mino, as opposed to Minot. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> They're French. French. Yeah, so it all depends on whether you're channeling your French or not. Yeah. But that's clearing that cache. What is that cache holding? So look at this web page. You've got all those pictures that are there and the text that's there. So there's text there. There's a picture there, a picture there, a picture there. All of those things are brought in and they're held in a storage memory, if you will, of the web browser. Okay. Okay. Sometimes these things, that when they're brought in, they're malformed and they won't, they they don't go away when they're supposed to, because most web browsers are supposed to only keep, you know, current. It's allowed to bring in so much, and then it's supposed to cleanse itself. Well, I find that a lot of times web design is not what it should be. And by doing that, I can clean it up very nicely. Uh, now, that's Firefox. Chrome. If I go... That again, please. Huh? Sure you get that Firefox. L. I go to where it says history. History. And I go to where it says the second item down, clear recent history. And then you get the box that says, okay, what do you want to clear? The other thing, let me just zoom in here again, is I had it just clear my history from the last hour. If things are if things are really slowed down, I tell them, hey, clear everything. That's every awesome. every little thing you brought in ever. And I'll awesome. start fresh. Handy to do if you're about to back up your machine. Yeah. Saves a lot of time. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, this this clearing operation also erase uh, some uh, passwords and stuff like that. Okay, let's go look at that dialog box again. Clear recent history. Let me just zoom in here. You'll see where over here it says active logins. Yeah. It'll log you out, but nowhere does Firefox let you erase your passwords. Okay. So Firefox is protecting you from doing something stupid. But it's a good question because other web browsers won't do that. Don't, don't just, you know, if you say clear everything, yeah, right. 
what I like about Firefox is they say, do you want to clear cache, do you want to clear cookies, mm -hmm. you can select them all or not select them all. What, what about Safari? You don't get oh, that option on oh, Safari. Let me, do, let me do Google first. Yeah. Google Chrome. Google Chrome, yeah, you go up to history, you go like, hey, wait a minute, where is it? Okay, so Google and Firefox deliberately don't do things the same way because Google's a big, profitable company and they got all these lawyers on the staff and they'll sue you if you look at them the wrong way. So Firefox is always very careful about doing it their own way, usually a better way. So with Google Chrome, you're going to look for those little three dots right there, see those three dots? You click on those and then you go down to more tools. Then you get your spinning wheel because it's Chrome. And then you have a thing called clear browsing data. Okay, so notice Firefox, they take you in one menu. Google Chrome, they take you in three. Then we've got a dialog box here where it says, oh, do you want to clear browsing history? Okay, cookies and other site data or cached images and files. So you would uncheck the browsing history and the cookies. Set it for what you want, like all time, and then tell it to clear data. So you're clearing your cache files and that other stuff. What did you clear? What did you leave? What did I leave? Yeah. I left the history because I'm over 65 and I forget where things are. Okay. And so I like to be able to go to my history thing and say, hey, show full history. And then I can click on it and say, okay, Chrome history, and it'll tell me, oh, yeah, last Friday you were on this website. And I go, that's the website. Yeah. It also means that if I'm ever brought up on some sort of criminal charge, you're going to have a lot of stuff, evidence that I was researching thallium. You know, when the wife is no longer, the wife has died from some strange metallic death. So Not that I remember this for. Okay, Safari. <laughs> you want to think twice about clearing all the cookies, though. Okay. So, yeah, for the ladies, just cover your ears. Men, you know, you know your wife is keeping you, your attention. Home when she starts referring to you as the first husband. Yeah. <laughs> so just be aware. <coughs> Safari. Let's see. They keep moving where it is, and I have no clear where it's it is. Clear history under there. Go to history. Oh, yeah, they no, right. Clear history all the way at the bottom. No, it was oh, yeah. a, I, on Safari, just go back to the Safari thing, and it had it right at the beginning. Okay, what do you do? Cancel. Go to so to the bottom. See the, the bottom? Ah, no, clear right. history. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Okay, so we've got it in two places. Sorry. And it says it will remove related cookies and other website data. So if they don't let you pick and choose, it's going to clear out the cookies, it's going to clear out website data, it's going to clear out the cache. So they're, they're not giving you a whole lot of choices. If they don't clear out what do they the mean password? by website data? Uh, typically, it's metadata that the website, like if you've got uh, tracking cookies on you, the stuff so that they know to show up that ad for uh, uh, loafers, because you've been looking at loafers and, on Kohl's, and it remembered that, and so now some other website's going to show you loafers on the sidebar yeah. when you're actually looking for firewood. As you said Firefox cleared out, identify you. it didn't yeah. clear out the password intentionally. Correct. Is this one? Safari? Safari also does not touch those passwords. Okay. Okay. Google does not touch those passwords. Opera, they used to, and then they learned that they needed to take that out. Okay. So doing that broad history would not be a bad thing necessarily. Correct. Especially, especially if you've gotten these pop-ups where they say, dial. One eight eight eight. You know your your Mac has a virus. Blah blah blah. Or uh, the dreaded. Uh, we have hacked your web camera, and we have all these embarrassing photos of you. And if you don't buy this Bitcoin and send it to us, you know, I'm going to like, guys, you're giving me your Bitcoin wallet. That might not be as anonymous as you think it is. You know? So anyway. 
moving right ahead. So that that's something that I do on a regular basis. So we go to the Safari and just click that. Right. So you're in Safari, you go to that first column, right. clear history, and you just say clear history. Okay. Now, in my case, I would probably have it clear, you know, the stuff to do. Okay. It's also possible to go clear stuff for a particular website. Yeah. And so if you have a problem with them, you don't want to crash all your saved logins and context and press for other sites, you know, you can select a site usually and just get them. And I also turn on developer menu so I can clear the cache mm -hmm. in Safari. Uh, how would you do it if you just wanted to clear a particular site? Um, you're talking about clear, doing some site settings for a site in Safari? Well, for example, I was having trouble with Logitech, so I went in, I guess it was the developer menu. Logitech. Oh, you have the developer turned on in Safari? Yeah. Okay, that gives you all sorts of tools that normal people wouldn't have access to. Yeah, but it does have the clear stuff. I don't know, is that available in your mortals? Not all the other yeah. fancy You're stuff. not going to get the, the sort order. of granular control of the yeah. website settings in Safari. Safari is from Apple. Their philosophy is you... We know what we're doing. Yeah, they we know, know what, what they're doing. doing. We know what you're you doing. You don't know what you're doing. You are a user, not a customer. You are a user who is clueless, and that's why we don't even bother to give you instruction manuals because we know you won't read them anyway. Okay. So, uh, if, if I'm doing important stuff, I'm typically either in a Firefox web browser, either Tor-based or not Tor-based, or I'm in Google Chrome. Because they allow you to actually tweak the settings on of a website, what it's allowed to do, what it isn't allowed to do. So, so Bill, you're, you're saying you can't, you can't just pick and choose websites you want, you want to delete, you have to Delete everything, or correct in terms, of, in terms of and files Safari. and clippers. and correct. Safari. Now, in the in the same vein, you got that little download fo folder over in the lower yeah. uh, taskbar. Safari. Let me get Safari back up. Okay. You got uh, our little, uh, w w when you download things, yeah. or when I do, it goes to that download folder. Folder. My yeah. download folder is pretty doggone big, and I have never been able to figure out how do I pick and choose stuff in there I don't use anymore. Uh, not going to What? Drag it to trash. We don't use it anymore. Just, no, no, no. He's talking about the website itself keeps a list of things that you've downloaded. I see. It keeps a list. Okay. Yeah. So give, there, give me a second here. Uh, Google download. As I said, I don't normally do stuff in uh, um, Safari, so let me just real quick tell it to download and say, "Yeah, I'll allow." Yeah, see, okay, just so here's that here's that download folder. All right. Well, yeah. If you click on the one and down okay, in the lower, see the see the little thing. Yeah. Okay. If I say, if I click on the magnifying glass. It's not showing me the download list that the web browser kept. It's showing me a folder on my hard drive called Downloads. Okay. Okay, so this is another way of getting there would be if you're in Finder. Is that the same when it's in the dock? Right? Yeah. 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 The one that's yeah. down in the dock. Yeah, that's, that's an alias to the Downloads folder. So in your, you got your hard drive. And then there's a folder on the hard drive called Users. Inside the User folder, there are folders for different people who are allowed to log into that computer. Inside those folders is the Downloads folder. Let me see if I can get this. Okay, I'm going to switch to what's called Column View here. All right. So, okay, and now I'm going to 
zoom in a little bit so people can sort of see it a little bit better. Okay, so here's your Macintosh hard drive. Okay, that's column one. These are the folders that are inside it. Think like a Russian Matryoshka doll, you know, one inside the other. Inside, so you got applications, library, system, and users that's inside your hard drive. You click on users. These are the folders for the users that are allowed to log into this computer. You got shared, which is the common folder. Think of it like the village green. You know, nobody takes care of it. Okay. Then there's TMG Dayton. That's the user that I'm logged in with right now. And then there's TMG Dayton 2, because if the first one gets followed up, I got another account I can still get in the computer. And then there's one for me personally, because I keep my personal stuff away from the club stuff. If I click on the TMG Dayton one, and notice that, you know, let me just zoom in a little bit more here. Notice the TMG Dayton one has a little house icon. That's, it tells you that's the one you're logged in with. And in there I've got an applications folder, which is for Google to put their stuff. A desktop, so anything that I can see on my desktop of the computer is in that folder. Documents and downloads. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here so you can see, hey, I got Google Chrome is in there. I got a HyperCard something in there. I got Mini VMac. I mean, there's bunches of stuff in there. This is like, um, I'm trying to think of something that would be, it's, it's, it's like you never emptied out your mailbox. You know, you got USPS. Yeah. You know. You, you read the let you know, you, you get the package delivered, and then you leave it on the porch, okay, <laughs> after you take the stuff out of it. So this is the number one place where people need to look and see what all's in their download folder. Typically, if you downloaded it and it's from two years ago, you don't need it anymore. Well, yeah, it's like sheets of paper in a file folder. And okay, I just so want to take zoom three out of your sheets out of that file folder. So a great away. way is to, say, organize it by data added. So this is all the stuff that came into that download folder in 2019, and this is the one item that came in in 2020. So I could click <laughs> on these other guys and say, hey, you know what? Adios. Okay. Yes, so, Bill. So, so the so the path is to go to the hard drive and then it can then pick on the uh, users. Yeah. Users. Yeah. Hey, Bill. Yes, Bill. Could you click once on your downloads folder icon in the dock? Okay, I clicked once on my downloads folder. See the arrow at the top? Yeah. Click on that once. And it'll it take right to your downloads folder. Yeah, we don't have to go into them. No, I you like also, the way you click once on your okay. dock. John, just watch, okay? Yeah. So I bring my pointer down yeah. to that downloads folder. When the pointer's on top of it, it the little pop up says, hey, I'm the downloads yep. folder. Yep. I click once. I don't it'll, get that. It'll give me a list of what's there, I and don't at get the top that. will be an arrow. I, I don't click get the that. arrow, and it opens it up. What operating system do you run? I think What's the one below high so uh, high Sierra? Yeah, yeah. Sierra. Yeah. It should have that. Everywhere. He's got it. Also, one other thing, Bill, if you click on your downloads folder, once there in the dock, in the dock, click mm -hmm. once. Yeah. If you click on one of those items, if there's a multiple, whatever, click on it once and drag it to the trash. Yeah, let me do this it's first. I think when I click on the downloads folder, I get that the 500 or 800 but downloads I get. very, very top, there's an arrow. Okay. You get sort of a, it's kind Here of a faded out look you, you get sort of a banana type. I mean, Here we go. It looks like, yeah. 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 I well, just I, I, I've, I've, never, I've never seen that. Okay. Yeah, okay. I have never seen that. Another way to do it is click on the dock or the uh, downloads folder in the dock once. Two finger click. 
Yeah. Okay, no one thing. Just, just yeah, one if thing you do a two finger <laughs> click, the first item above it is open downloads. Right. Which okay. takes you there. But you can also drag it, if you click once, take one of those, click and drag it to the trash. Like that. It's in the trash, and it's out of your downloads folder. Hey, Bill. Bill. Okay, because, yeah, oh. I, I just got a okay. ton of stuff in that download folder, and I've never been able to figure also, out how to clean it up. Also, if you go to the up. Finder, if you go to the Finder, just click on your Finder icon in the dock, it will bring a window up. You have a left column that shows all your documents and application folders and all that kind of stuff. Then that right there should be your download folder in that also. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Every time I go to Borsalis Bakery, I strike out. Okay, you seem to be there all the time. So here's the deal. Okay, let me know when you got some scones. Well, my wife likes scones. She every time she sends me, I come back no scones. Okay, she's beginning to lose faith in me. Let me know when you got some. I'll come out and we'll just do a finder. All the things you can do in Finder. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bill. I actually learned something that I didn't know. All right, so I got to call it quits for help desk. We got to do a quickie with our raffle now. So last year, I don't remember what month it was, we talked about home automation. And uh, this is going to be an update to that. So there's going to be a little bit of new information at the beginning. I want to talk a little bit about what I'm still using, what I personally <coughs> use. And then uh, after we get through that, I'm going to talk a little bit about some stuff that's new. It just it just came out at CES. I got some pictures from a variety of really interesting devices. Some of them are just fun. Some of them are real. Uh, some of them I don't think will ever be real. But we'll talk about those. And then at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about more serious automation using uh, the, the new features that came with the update this year to uh, the Home app, as well as some of the really cool features you can do with Shortcuts if we have any time left. Shortcuts is a brand new app that allows all kinds of really powerful automation. I just want to show you how powerful that is. And it's, it's something fun to play with. You get brave and you want to play with something new, it's worth it. So we'll talk about all that. So uh, to start with, I wanted to refresh. This is a slide from last time, what home automation is. It'll be in your email when you get the email after the meeting. But home automation is basically a way to access control devices in your house and to make them work. And you make them work from everywhere. And uh, that's just a refresher. I don't know if anybody remembers that slide from last year or not, but I should that slide last year. And basically, what I like about it is access from anywhere. I'm all the time when I'm at the gym, going to the house to make sure I turn something off because I can never remember if I turned it off, or things like that. So um, it's really powerful. And all kinds of devices. In fact, Apple updated this page on their web page this year, and uh, it shows all the devices that can be controlled. If you ever get time, go to this website. It's on the web page. Go under home, home accessories. And there's some things in here I didn't even know you could control. I hadn't seen any device like this. Like they say faucets. Yeah. I knew there was garage doors. We've talked about garage doors. Some people in here have one. Humidifiers. I've seen the humidifiers before. Lights. We'll talk about lights today. Locks. We'll talk about my lock again today. Outlets is a really powerful one. I'll tell you some of the things I'm doing with outlets now. It's really cool. Uh, receivers, uh, routers, security, security devices like cameras, which is what got uh, Amazon in all kinds of trouble. We're going to talk about the Amazon story today because I want to clarify what happened and what's really going on there. We'll talk about sensors a little bit, speakers. I've done a little bit of stuff with speakers. Uh, speakers. Sprinklers is an interesting one. I didn't realize there was any home kit sprinklers. I have not seen one. Uh, but if, you're in, if you've got a sprinkler in your yard and you want to control it with home kit, it sounds like you can do it. We just have to find it. Switches, we've talked a little bit about the past. We'll talk about today. Thermostats, I use a thermostat. Uh, TVs, I use the Apple TV as a remote control device. Uh, windows, blinds. Anybody seen the remote blinds that you control with? These are really cool. They're really expensive, yeah. but they're really cool. I think they cost like eight, seven, eight dollars. Does that sound right? They're really expensive. But I have some friends. In fact, uh, 
Allison, who presented here a couple months ago, she has a set at home. And I've seen them and watched them work uh, online, and they're really cool. So we're going to talk about a few of these things today. Stop me if you have questions. I want to make sure you understand what I'm doing here and it makes some sense. And uh, then we'll go from there. All right, my stuff. This is just a few of the things from last time I wanted to read, talk about, tell you where I'm at. I'm still using a ton of the Hue light bulbs. These are made by Philips. They're Philips Hues. They use a hub, and uh, they're, they're, you can get multicolor ones that are amazing, the, all the colors that they can do. I even have a porch light that's got one of these in it. Um, they're, really, they're really cool. And they've announced some new stuff. These are new, new features that they got over here, a new, a new stand they have. They've got outdoor bulbs now. They've got a whole lot of new stuff going on. They've got a, a bulb now that has a built-in security, something or the other. I don't remember all the details, but they have launched some new stuff. If you go to their website, you can read about it. But I still like the new bulbs a lot. Now, there are a lot of new bulbs on the market, and I think they're more cost-effective, to be honest. I was looking for some additional hue bulbs for other rooms I wanted to put them in this week, and I noticed that uh, there are a lot of new competitors. And I'm, most of them are not compatible to Bill's discussion earlier. So you can't buy a hue bulbs and put them in where you've got eye device bulbs or whoever else is out there. Uh, so that's one big difference. The other big difference is a lot of people now that are launching new products that don't require a hub. Do, do you understand what the hub does? A hub is a device that you put in your house that is the device that connects to the internet. And then you attach a whole bunch of other devices like light bulbs to the hub, and the hub keeps track of all these devices. So when I send a command that says turn on the bulb in my bedroom, it goes to the hub, then the hub using a different protocol sends the information to the bulb and says turn on the bulb. So the bulb doesn't talk directly to the internet. Yeah. Is there any phantom electricity being used in a dormant state? Only from the hub. The hub is online, it's a powered device, it's got electronics in it, so therefore it's got some But the lamp isn't. The lamp is not, it's just like any other situation. Okay. And uh, if there is, I don't know how we get it, because usually there's some switch somewhere. Involved. But if it's got power, it could have a little bit of a draw, but it would be very, very small. It could have enough to listen for the hub. <laughs> well, yeah, but I think it's, I think it depends on what the technology is. But I think it might, you're, you're probably right. But at any rate, the story here is that there's a lot of new devices on the market that do not require a hub. Now, there's a real debate on how important is it is to have a hub. I think the hub is really nice because it gives me one device that I have to set up and configure and everything else is done and it's really simple that way. But it means you've got this extra device in your house and every time you, you know, every, every, everybody's got a new hub, a different hub and it's crazy. Philips does offer a Hue bulb now that does not need a That was hub. brand new. They just announced that right And uh, also read the package carefully. If you read the package carefully on both the one that requires a hub and the hubless. It's, it's specifically for fixtures that are not totally enclosed. Yes, they say that because they don't want overheat. The, these bulbs are LEDs, and LEDs, they, the LED bulbs generate a lot of heat because they have to have a big heat sink. The base of them is a big heat sink because there's a lot of power being dis dispersed out of the device. So you got to take 120 volts and get it down to LED voltages, which are very low power DC voltages. And so, you know, you've got a lot of power to dissipate. We can have a whole class on how to dissipate that power. This is one of the things I did for a living. Uh, so that's the lights. There's a lot of new ones out there. If you're going to get into the light market, I suggest you look at what kind of bulbs you want. Do some research on all the different ones. We can always talk about that in here sometime. Uh, a friend of mine loves the iDevices bulbs. I like the Hue bulbs. You're going to find everybody's got a different thing they like. I like hubs. I don't have a problem with hubs. Um, some people do. So. so that's bulbs. I'm still using my August lock. Does everybody remember my August <coughs> lock? I showed it last year. I actually think I brought an old one in. I've had one failure in the device. They replaced it for free. Um, but I love it, and I love what it does. I grant access to my kids, for example. When we left town, we took off for Christmas and went out west. And uh, I needed to give my son access to the house and so he could get in and out. And rather than have to give him a key, I just gave him access, and he gets on his phone, and he can get in the house because I gave him access. So that would make some people nervous, but I'm very comfortable with it um, because I know the rest of the security system is really robust. 
So that's that device. It does use a geofence. I've added some new features that I hadn't turned on the last time we talked. Uh, now I've got this feature when I get when I get close to the house, it turn it unlocks the door automatically. Same with when Teresa gets close to the house. So if we drive up, the house unlocks. It gives us two minutes to get inside before we have to get our phones out and actually unlock it or our keys because we can use either one. Um, I like that feature because I'm a gadget guy and I think it's pretty cool. But it, it, we go for a walk, you know, when we get close enough to the house, it unlocks. I don't have to even have my phone with me, it does it from my watch. So uh, I really like that feature, but it, you got to have the right mindset to be willing to do that. Not everybody's going to be willing to do that. Thermostat, I, I have an Ecobee. I had uh, other thermostats in the past. This, the Ecobee is my favorite of all the uh, smart thermostats I've used. I have the Ecobee 3, they just released the Ecobee 4. Uh, the Ecobee 3 has a remote sensor. It's got a built-in uh, motion detector, both on the remote sensor as well as on the home device. So I've turned on this home automation that I'll show you later, that when I wake up in the morning, and I know this is stupid, but I just had to do this. When I wake up in the morning, I wanted the Porsche light to turn on, because shortly after I wake up and get my gym clothes on, I leave and go to the gym really early in the morning, it's still dark outside. So I use the motion detector in the thermostat to detect when I'm in the right place in the house because it's in a place where I wouldn't go if I wasn't going to get ready to go to the gym. And uh, so what it does is it monitors that and when it senses my motion and it's between four, 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the morning, turn on the porch light. Any other time of the day, it ignores it. So these are just kind of little cool features, but all that happens because of the sensor inside the equally thermostat, which has nothing to do with anything else except detecting my body. You can also set it up to detect motion in the house to turn the heat up or turn the heat down when there's no motion in the house. And I use those kind of things too. The rain, now this is the one that's going to get a lot of attention in a couple minutes. I still have my rain doorbell. I still love my rain doorbell. You've got to be aware that Amazon slash rain made some big, mis uh, big mistake. I don't think it's as bad as the press made it out to be. We'll talk about that here in a second. But, uh, but as that aside, it still works really good. I can tell you many times when we've been somewhere, somebody came to the door, I needed to answer, and I made it sound like I was in the house that just wasn't available, but, um, but I needed to respond to the person at the door and allow them to do that. And I was somewhere, I don't even know where I was the last time I did it, I was way out of town. But it's, it works, it works really well. And I'd like to upgrade it and get a new one, but I haven't done that yet. We'll talk about that one some more in a minute. The lights and power outlets, the power outlets particularly, I still use a lot of power outlets. I'll show a separate slide on those in a couple of minutes. Um, I like power outlets, like the Wemo power outlets that I can control remotely. Uh, I like ones that are HomeKit compatible, so I can do it all from inside HomeKit. It also allows me to automate those switches. So for example, one of the automations I'll show you a little later is I have this automation that when I'm ready to go to bed, I just tell, tell you know who, the lady, I say, hey, lady, prepare for bed. And it sets everything up the way I want it. For a little while, it turns on the light in the bedroom. We have this fan that we run just for the white noise. It turns on the fan. It does all this other stuff, and then it shuts down. And uh, so it, all that's done through power outlets and lights. And so it just combines all that stuff into one app, the home app, HomeKit app, and does all that. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Again, like I mentioned here, I'm really focused on HomeKit devices and new devices that are HomeKit compatible. I haven't added a lot in the last six, seven months. Um, you slow down on that stuff when you retire, which is a good thing. But I still like to add stuff to that, and you'll see some of that in a few minutes. Um, so some of the news come out in this area recently, and I want to show you some of this. Some of this has been fun. Some of this is serious stuff. The first is news that's really more serious. This was mentioned earlier. Apple um, Apple was at, does anybody know the last time Apple was at CES? Yeah. It's been years. I mean, I've been there many times and they've never been there when I was there, at least in an official capacity. Not in an official capacity, but they were there in an official capacity for a couple different things. One thing was to talk about HomeKit. So, they were there to talk about HomeKit, the things that went on there. I haven't seen much about that presentation yet, but I do know that it happened, and uh, I do know there were some things that came out of it that were really interesting. That'll be another topic for later. 
but they were at CES, which just shows you how serious they are about the home automation front. They're really trying to attack that. They went there when they haven't been there for years. And I've heard from people that were there that say home automation was a big, big thing at CES this year. It was everywhere. And uh, a lot more real than some of the things they've done in the past. Ring. Now we're going to talk about the Ring story. This thing really got really a lot of press. And it should, because when you're dealing with somebody's security, that's a real problem. Ring makes cameras, among other things. They make a lot of security cameras. They make cameras you can put in your house. I will never put a Ring camera in my living room. It ain't going to happen. Because I don't trust them. Um, doesn't mean you may not want to do it, but I will never put a Ring camera in my living room. There's a couple other companies. Why? They just got theirs hacked. And you know you could log in and see what they're doing in their house. You know It's just crazy stuff. So I really worry about Amazon and I worry about Ring in that way. So this is something you have to think about when you're putting a camera in your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen or wherever you're putting it. Uh, the doorbell being on the front porch, I'm a lot less concerned. And that's how I rationalize my decision to put a camera on my porch. This is the uh, article that you may want to look up some of these articles. They're all over the internet. You can read them all over the place. The real thing that they did, they weren't storing, Pat, they weren't storing information in a secure way. But the bigger factor is, um, if you had somebody's email address, it was really easy with just a little bit of information to figure out how to get into their, to their device. If you have my password and my user ID, you can log into my Ring device and watch what's going on on my porch and see who's coming to my house. You know, is that a disaster? Maybe, maybe not. But it's because they did secure that information in the proper way. And uh, you know, if you're not, if you're a person that uses the same password as, and the same user ID all over the place, this is a real bad thing. Because what that means is, once they have it for here, they can log into all your accounts. If your bank account is the same password and user ID as your Ring device, and they get your Ring device information, then they log into your bank. Those are different orders of magnitude. <coughs> so. You want to be real careful. You always use a unique password everywhere, which I do, and so I'm not as worried about this, but it's just uncomfortable to think that Rain wasn't securing information properly and they were being a little sloppy. And then you have a separate story with the story with the police getting, getting in cozy with the police departments and trying to share information with the police departments. Share is not the right word, but that's what they're doing. Um, shortly after CES, or right in the middle of CES, this announcement comes out. Rain introduces new privacy controls. <laughs> you know what this is a response to. This was a direct response to what had just happened. And they just announced this is inside the app there's going to be some new privacy controls. I don't know how good they're going to be. They describe them in the article. It's, a, it's on Verge, I think, if you want to go read it. But uh, they're trying to make up. It's a little late. They've already kind of messed up. And it's not the first time they've messed up. So. So that's what's going on with Ring. They have some new, new devices. They have a security system. It's an outdoor security system that's really cool. Um, all kinds of new controls. I get this thing on mine. If somebody, this is new since the last time I presented, but if somebody has a problem, they see something on their video camera on their Ring device, like somebody walking around their yard doing something. There was one yesterday from somebody saw somebody messing with their car, trying to get in their car, and they caught it on their Ring detector. And then I saw it because they had their brain detector set up to share their problems or their, their issues or what's going on with their neighbors. It's called neighborhood. And that's a pretty cool feature. I actually like that. Um, because it does give me some advice. And then somebody was asking, does anybody know this person? Because you could see who it was. It was real easy to make this person out. So I don't know what ever happened to it. I didn't follow up. But you know, Rain is doing some rather interesting things here if you're, if you're willing to share that kind of information. I don't really want it going to the police department, but I do think it's important to share that with my neighbors. And there's more on the control center. I'm not going to walk through that. Here's a blow up of that. Control center might be perceived as a direct response to criticisms from advocate groups about their whole thing. But, but I think it's really a response. The Electronic Frontier Foundation really got after them about some of the things they're doing. So this was their response. That'll be in the handout. Rain has also added, added light bulbs, so they've got in the light bulb game, as well as light bulbs with solar power, uh, solar power systems. And I don't know how that's going to work exactly, but it, it sounds interesting. They're going to charge it up and power it from the solar. But I don't know why you have your lights on to get solar. But anyway, 
that's some of the new stuff they're doing. Okay, this is the project Bill mentioned earlier. The project Connected Home over IP, that's the formal name. You probably will see it abbreviated as CHIP. Connected Home over IP. Interesting idea. The idea is to solve this problem of all this all these different protocols and everybody's different. So if you buy something from Q versus you buy something from ID device, I device, or whoever, they're all different. They all use different systems. So a, a small group of these folks have got together, and it includes Apple and a variety of others, and trying to standardize um, what this protocol looks like. I've been involved in these kind of things. I was involved in a commercial kitchen protocol um, protocol thing trying to provide a common protocol to use across the kitchen. These things don't usually go really well, but I'm hopeful that this one does go well. Here's my little cartoon for it. Situation. There are 14 competing standards. 14. Ridiculous. We need to develop one universal standard. That's what they, I consider to have been able to uh, standardize. My experience has been usually when that happens, and all of a sudden there's a lot of cost involved and overhead, and therefore it doesn't get used because it's too expensive. Yes? I like that font. What's the name of it? I don't remember. I, just, I stole the cartoon from somewhere. XKCD. Is that it? XKCD. That's a great font. It's almost like Comic Sans. All right. Here's some other new stuff that was shown at CES. Some of this is just fun. Some of it's more serious. I like this. It's a little different than standard connected home devices. But if you have a newer iPhone, you can charge it by setting it on top of a particular charger. Q, it's, it's spelled uh, QI, right? QUI. QUI, whatever it is. Anyway, these chargers, you can set your iPhone on this charger. That's the way I charge my iPhone at night. I just set it on the charger and it's charged up the next day. It's a little bit slower, so if you need a fast charge, it doesn't charge fast. But I really like that capability. Well, this company launched this new charger that has enough capability that it can charge through a wood desk. It's not a real thick wood desk. But this thing mounts underneath the table here. And then when you set your phone on top, you don't have a big block of whatever up there. You just lay your phone there and it charges. I think that's so much nicer looking than have one of these big blocks laying on the table. And I think I might even have one with me. But you lay it on the table. And it's cool, but it's big and ugly. But this thing's under the table. Now, how do you get it lined up? I don't know, because you've got to line them up really exact. But uh, You'd have but, to screw into the table, too, wouldn't you? Yeah, you got to screw the table. That's what these holes are for. Yeah. These are mounting holes so that it mounts under the table, so you have to have a table where you're comfortable mounting little screws in. And once it's there, though, let's see if I have that with me. Once it's there, it would be really great, so you, know, you wouldn't have that. But, you know, do you need to have wireless charging? No, not really. Some people think that's crazy. Um, but I love wireless charging on my iPhone. I use wireless charging on my... Uh, AirPods too. Yes. Uh, if rumor is uh, the next iPhone might be totally wireless charging. There's been talk about that, but I don't think it'll happen on the next one. But we'll see. It's going to happen sometime. Where do you lay your phone? So that's wireless charging. It's a little bit different than normal home stuff that I talk about, but I love it. And I think this is a cool device. Here's the name of the company. Cool Labs. Hundred five dollars for that one. I think the charger that I use at night, I'd say 15 bucks, so this is a little pricey, though. but uh, you get the idea. All right. I don't know where these guys are coming from, but they're all the time. This is Kohler. <coughs> Kohler is always coming up with really interesting ways to use HomeKit or these home devices in your house. Some of them, I think, they're just having fun with this. But this is the latest one I saw this. This was at CES. This puts a smart speaker in your shower right in the shower head. Uh, I don't know, I have a, I have a, a, an, you know, a wireless speaker in my shower and it's waterproof and it just sticks on the wall and it only cost me 10 bucks. This is not going to be 10 bucks because <laughs> it's colder. Just for the name you're going to pay a hundred bucks. So it's interesting, if you're in the market for a speaker in your shower and you want it to look cool, here you are. Go to Kohler, and I'm sure you can find out if they ever make it. But I thought it was pretty interesting that they did it. They always are interested in coming up with some interesting ideas. They had the, 
they had something last year too. I don't remember what it was. I'll have to go back and find it. But they do something. I don't need one. Now, Wi Fi enabled smart plugs. I mentioned this earlier. This is the one I use. There are lots of these on the market. Some of them are getting really small. But what these do is, if, you, if they're HomeKit enabled, so that when you go into HomeKit, you'll have the thing on your panel. And uh, you can set up automation for these. This is, uh, I've got these, I use these, I like these. Wemo makes one. Um, not all of them that are on the market are compatible with HomeKit. So if you're interested in using HomeKit, be sure anything you buy that you check to see if it's HomeKit compatible. If it's not HomeKit compatible and you're not interested in HomeKit, that's fine too. You don't have to use HomeKit. Rain is not HomeKit compatible when I use Rain. So. so just be sure you always check that. But this is the one I use. And they have their own app too. You can use their app or you can use HomeKit. And uh, it works pretty nice. This is a, the Wemo, a brand new Wemo device. It just came out really small. Their, their own one is the one you have. And it's a little bit bigger, but it still works great. This one is, uh, you know, not much bigger than the size of those old 5-watt iPhone chargers. I mean, really small. And uh, works really well. Okay, smart switches. There are a lot of new smart switches on the market. Uh, I had one I showed you last year from Logitech that I got, like, stuck on my wall. You don't have to have a power outlet or anything. You just stick this thing on your wall. It doesn't take a battery because when you press it, it generates enough battery, enough energy to run the device, and then your phone picks it up and you can actually operate the device. This one, I don't know much about it, but the cool thing about this one is it doesn't require common wire. If you get it in older houses, you don't generally have both wires coming to the switch. You only break one connection most of the time in those old wiring jobs. So you got 120 volts coming out there, but you can't really get 120 volts off of it to power it because you don't have a common wire, which is also common with a lot of thermostats. Well, this particular device doesn't need the common wire, and they're able to do that. And I don't know anything about the technology they use. I just, it's really good to see somebody doing something that doesn't have a common wire. Most of these kind of devices that are on the market I can't use in my house because none of my outlets have a common wire going to the switch. They just have the hot wire being switched. Because that's the way the code used to be. Lutron also manufactures a... Uh, they do. They have a good switch that does not need a uh, yeah, I like the one from Logitech, but I, they make a good one, too. All right, locks. There are a lot of new locks on the market from a lot of people that maybe you've never even heard of. Um, I like my August lock. It was one of, the one of the first people to really come to market. I like it because it allows me to, uh, to control it, but more than the controlling capability is the fact that I can still use my key. I didn't have to replace my key and lock mechanism to use their locks, which is really important for me. It may not be for you. You may want to replace the guts and everything, which you can do with some other locks. But uh, there's a lot of new, new, new locks on the market that look really nice. Uh, the bad thing about the August lock, I think it's ugly. They, this is a very nice looking lock mechanism. Their new August, new August is actually smaller. Much smaller. It does not require a separate hub. Right, they got rid of the hub. And that's one place I really don't like the hub. I never use the hub anyway. But uh, August, they, they reduced the size significantly, like 50 percent or something like that. I saw. And uh, this one will work offline. That's probably the most interesting thing about this particular device. You don't have to be connected for it to work. It uses Bluetooth, so if you can't be online with it or you want to not be online with it, it'll just use Bluetooth between your phone and the device, which means you got to be close. But, you know, that may be exactly what you want. If you're worried about security over the Internet, then you can just not use that and use this device offline, and it works, and you're very secure with that, unless somebody else is staying on your porch. That's the name of it. It's the Morsi lock system. So, if I was to write that down, it will be in your handouts. To All right. There never end. This one. There will always be a new smart toothbrush. Um, I don't know. That, it just amazes me how many smart toothbrushes are on the market and how many, you know, they just refuse to go away. They just keep coming back. Uh, I do think there's some interesting things about, you know, this one here does some really interesting things. Like it actually in your mouth tries to detect where you have plaque and direct you to the plaque. 
How it does that, I still don't understand. But it's supposed to help direct you to where you can spend more time in your mouth. And uh, there's some, oh, they put AI in a toothbrush. This baby has AI, artificial intelligence in it. it tries to help you figure out where you need to be spending your time in your mouth to get the plaque out. And I just find that crazy. But there's always going to be somebody out there that's willing to spend a bunch of money on toothbrushes. And this is, this is apparent with this toothbrush. <laughs> I do like this one. There is a lot of new meat probes that, and I love to cook, and I love to cook meat especially. And these probes can go in the device. The, you know, if you say you put a big roast in the oven, and you're going to roast it. You can put the probe in the oven, and it transmits to your phone from inside the oven, and you can set all kinds of things like you know, tell you when it's done, blah blah blah. But you know, you remember the day we had to open the door, stick the thermometer in, you looked at the thing, wait for the temperature to come up, and you know, maybe you didn't leave the, this just leave in there all the time. It, that's what it's designed for. And uh, there's a lot of other new ones on the market. I think the features that they're adding to the thermometers is really powerful. So it works on the barbecue. Huh? Works on the barbecue, too. Yes, it works very well on the barbecue. It's probably better on the barbecue than the other. But they work really well. There's a lot of these out there. So I wouldn't say this is the best one. This was a new one. I just love the way this one looks. It is really a really nice looking device, and I like the design. All right. <laughs> Is there a body toilet paper manager? <laughs> and this was, C, this was at CES. If you go online, you can find a video of this somewhere. I know there's one out there. And the idea for this thing was so when your way. toilet paper runs low, this thing will bring your toilet paper. And, and it does some other things, like it's got a sensor to detect odor in the bathroom and some other things too. So I don't know that I want to do this, but if you're into this kind of thing, it's a robotic thing that just comes to you. Where is your toilet paper store? They didn't tell you all that. This is done, this is, you know, think about who's doing this. This is done by Charmin. I, I, don't know, I don't know if they got a toilet paper division that's got electronics in it. I don't know how they did this. But they presented this at, at, uh, at the show. A lot of things that are shown at the show never make it to market. I've got a feeling this is one of them. I think this was just a gimmick to get some press. Because I highly doubt anybody's going to buy this thing. But maybe there'll be some out there. I mean, people buy that. Does anybody here have the thing that runs around the Roomba that runs around and sweeps your floor? Yeah. You got a robot? Uh, I robot. Yeah, the I robots make them too. There's a lot of these things out there, and they're really cool if you're into that kind of thing. That I, I, it, my dog's hair would destroy it. So. All right. Now, for the cat lover. Uh oh. This thing is world's first litter box detector. It goes in. It's got a built-in stolen urine image recognition system to analyze the cat's deposits and tell you all about the health of your cat. <laughs> now, this will sell because there are people that will pay, and maybe some of you are in the same but that really love their cats and will pay anything for the health of their cat. So, you know, if you're into that, you got a cat and you want to know everything about your cat's health, this thing will analyze its uh, poop and its urine and tell you all kinds of things about your cat's health. So, probably not the thing that I'm going to buy, but you might be interested, so I just wanted to share that with you. <laughs> I told you there were some funny ones in here. All right. Any questions about CES or anything I saw or I heard about and saw? Because I want to get into a little bit of automation in the last few minutes. We just have a few minutes left. Okay. If you go on your iPhone or your iPad or on your Mac, this is on the Mac too. This is in your Mac. There's all three app, all three pieces of hardware have this application. It's called Home, H-O-M-E. And if you open the Home app, you'll see all the devices that are in your home system. And across the bottom, there's a tab that's your home. This is what's in your house. The next one says Rooms, where you put your devices in the room that they belong into. So you have a room, say a living room, a bedroom, a dining room. Uh, TV room or a den, whatever you call your room. You can have, and then you put all your devices in the room that they're actually in. And then when you go into room, you can flip through your rooms and see what's there, see what the status of the devices are. So you can check them either place. And the last one's called automation. 
This is one they've done a lot of work on. And I want to show you that screen, what it looks like on mine, and then if we have any time left, we'll get into shortcuts. So notice on automations, I go to the automation tab. I have an automation that says 6.45 a.m. daily, one scene and three accessories. So what is a scene? A scene defines how you want your house to look in one single place. So like for example, I have a scene called arrive home. And when I arrive home, I want three lights to turn on, I want my thermostat to go up, I want, you know, this is just an example, I want all these things to happen when I arrive home. That's a scene. And that scene actually has inside it three accessories, which includes the lights and the thermostat, as part of that scene. That makes sense? So that's what a scene is and what an accessory is. And when you're doing automations, you want to use scene, when you're doing it on home automations, you want to use these scenes and devices to create actions, things that happen. I have another one that says, at 7 a.m. daily, this outlet's going to do something. I don't know what we'll go look at in a minute. At 7.30 p.m. daily, I've got, this one's disabled. This is when I travel. I have one when I travel that, that I set up and turn on whenever we're going to be out of the house for a while. That does that turns some lights on in the house in various sequences. So it looks like we're at home. Would it fool anybody? I don't know, but I I do it anyway. And then I've got one at 10 p.m. that does something with this outlet. When anyone leaves home, this one occurs. There's some more down here you can't see. That's examples of what this looks like in your automation screen in mine. All right. If I was going to create a new automation, I wanted to show you some of the things you can do with these automations. So you, there's a tab, there's a plus tab up here in the corner. You hit that. You can't see it here because it's already gone. Let me go back. See the plus right here? That's to add a new automation. So if I want to create a new automation, I hit the plus tab, the plus button, and then this thing pops up. These are the standard automations you can create. Now, there's other ways you can create other automations. I'm not going to talk about those right now because we just don't have time. But I want to get into a few things here. So some of the basic ones that they build into the Home app is, one, when people arrive. Now, in my home, there's only two people because our kids are all gone. So, and probably most of you, too. Teresa's in there. I'm in there. I can tell an automation when Teresa arrives or when I arrive or when either one of us arrives. So I can tell the device to take this action that I'm going to create when somebody arrives at the house, either one of us. Because we are, and I could add other people to that too, but that's the ones that I standardly define. The next one I can do is when people leave, when they leave the house. Because what it does, it creates a geofence around your house that's up so many yards. And when people leave that little bubble, this is when these things are going to occur. So when, when Teresa or I or both leave the house, not either one of us are at home, do this action. Time of day occurs. This is a really standard one. This is like the thing you plug in your wall and had the little bumps on it to get it out. When, when, every day at 8 o'clock in the morning, turn off the light. Every day at 8 o'clock in the morning, unlock the front door. I can do that, but you could do that. So that's the time of day. I have a question. Does yes. your computer have to be turned on? No. Or? Um, no. My phone could be off too. This, my phone, though, it's using, the, it's using the location of my phone to be my location or my watch. Because usually that's what it's looking for to know where I'm at. It doesn't have a sensor called Rick's body sensor. It has a sensor that recognizes where I'm at. My phone, my computer could be off. My phone generally has to be on me when I leave in order for it to do these things on my watch. An accessory is controlled. So that's a little different one. That says when somebody turns on this light, like my wife, when she turns on this light, I want some other action to happen. So when somebody controls maybe her or something, maybe somebody manually turns on one of my switches, or one of my, my son comes over, when I'm gone, this is a great example. So when I'm away from the house and I give my son access to my house, I can set up a, a, a notification based on this. When my son activates the device August lock, send me a notification. So I would know when he's at the house. Now the August app, the August app does that by itself, but you could do that. You could set up something when this device is, is used, 
the accessory is controlled, do something. And that's when, when a sensor detects something. This would be like a motion sensor. So when a motion detector senses <coughs> some motion, some particular presence, that's the one I used for that example I shared earlier. It recognizes when I walk right in front of that thermostat. And when I walk in front of that thermostat, that's when it turns on the porch light. That's a really easy one, a real easy example. And that's how I did it right there. The next screen, when you hit next, after you select one of those, the next one says, when anyone arrives, the first person to arrive, or the last person to arrive, there's some other selections you can do. A location, you can say home, or some, you can, you can set up a look, you can set do something. I don't know why you have to do this. When I arrive at Kroger, turn on the kitchen light. I don't know why you want to do that, but you can do it. Because you can say any location you want. You can get a fence around any location. So that's really powerful and it allows you to do some things. Or you can do it based on a time, any particular time. Now what I did for that example I used about turning off, I think I told you about it. turn off the porch light. I said to only do it between the hours of 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. Because I didn't want it to happen other times of the day. I only want that situation to occur in the morning when it's dark outside and I'm not home. So it turns off the porch light. And then when I come back home, I have one of these set up. When I enter the bubble, when I get in the range of my home, I turn the porch light back on so I can get in the house. Although I can get in in the dark. All right? Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Kind of? Just play with it sometime. It's amazing. What, even if you don't have a lot of stuff in there, it's a lot of fun to play with. So here's a, this one I told it. When anyone arrives at home, when Teresa or I, either one arrives at home, that's what I selected. Choose a location. Notice it's got other locations in here. Upper Valley Family Care, that's my doctor. Then, you know, you can pick any location that you've got an address for. So you can pick any location. It'll watch for you to be at that location before it takes actions. Or it could just be your home. You can say, when I get home, do this. All right? Or it'll beep your phone. And this one is when people leave. Like when anyone leaves the house, take some action. And then what you do is you'll, you'll have a list of accessories, all the things that you can control. And so these are some of the things I can control. There's a little empty a little entry room space. I got things there. I got the laundry room, Rick's room. There's a whole list of them I can go up and down on when we're in the app. But you get the idea. These are the accessories that I can control. Sensor automation, I can look at my Ecobee, which by the way I call Rogue One from the movie Rogue One. Uh, my Ecobee, little B is the, is the sensor that's near my door. And this is my living room sensor. I have a separate sensor that's made by, uh, I forget who makes that sensor, but these are all things I can use to sense what's going on. The other thing you can do that's really powerful with automation, they added a whole bunch of automations to shortcuts this year. And we're not going to have time for the sake of time to go through all that. But shortcut automations allow you to do even more interesting stuff. Like, for example, I can tell my iPhone, I can set up one of these automations so that when I enter the Wi-Fi, when I connect to Wi-Fi here at this location, do some action, like send me a notification or, or send an email to my wife to tell her I'm somewhere. There's all kinds you can tell. I can tell when I get into Wi-Fi location to send a message to my wife, tell her, I'll give you a better example. Let's say I was still working. I can set it so when I, when I leave the Wi-Fi at my office, send Teresa a notification, tell her I'm on the way home, and take some other actions. So there's, there's a lot of additional things you can do in here that you can't do in the home stuff, because it can do things to your phone, like, for example, enter low power mode. <coughs> Turn on the low power mode because I'm going to be in a place where I you know, don't want it to be using services. So turn on the airplane mode is another one. You can say, when I connect to the GoGo -Go Wi-Fi in the airplane, turn on the airplane mode. <coughs> you can do that in here. So my phone would automatically go to airplane mode as soon as I got on the airplane and it sends that network. So there's a whole bunch of these, and I didn't put the, um, I was going to do a demo, but we just don't have time. But if you go into the series shortcuts, there's a whole bunch of automations in there that are really powerful. And someday maybe we'll have time if you're interested in seeing some of those. But it's a lot more complicated than the home automation inside of home. So that's the home app. Any questions? I want to answer any questions that are left over. 
Otherwise, we're going to finish right on time. We're going to really good today. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Enjoy. Thank you. Next month, Bill's going to teach a class on fixing your Mac, doing things with your Mac when things go wrong. I don't know what you're going to call it. Whatever it's going to be called. It's going to be great. What you need to do so the Mac doesn't break in the first place. <laughs> That's going to be better. And what do you do if it's broke? Yeah. So we're going to do that next, next, uh, next time. And uh, so, that's, so have a great one. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.